Hi, my name is Sakisha, and I will be doing sex for satisfaction, uh, satisfaction with yourself and your partner. Sex is fun with yourself, even more fun with your partner. Okay, the objective is being able to have a uh, more intimate connection rather than just getting each other off. Um, orgasms with yourself and your partner, uh, orgasms with yourself and your partner without all the performance anxiety. Let's explore self-satisfaction in front of your partner. Uh, masturbating in front of your partner can help increase uh, intimacy among you and your partner. Um, it also provides uh, sexual confidence for yourself where you are uh, more confident about what you're doing and you're not shy about touching yourself in front of your partner. Uh, this also teaches your partner how you like it done. So if it's a certain way that you like to be touched, uh, it gives your partner idea of what to do. And also you learn more about, uh, learn more about your partner. Your partner learns about you. And plus, um, uh, it's a major turn on <laughs> for your partner. Let's talk about sex with uh, your partner. Remember, sex is supposed to feel good for uh, both you and your partner. So it's not a one-way street where your partner is just getting off and you feel like you have been ripped off. So it's a, keep in mind that it's supposed to feel good. Uh, when talking about sex with your partner, choose your tone and your setting. Um, how you start the conversation, it does set the pace of getting what you want. So if you bored God and say, hey, I want this, you might not end up getting what you want. You still will be left um, unsatisfied. Um, some people do not know how to talk or communicate with your, uh, their partner about what their needs are. So if you are unsure about converting your partner, try sec uh, uh, sexting. This will send um, a clear and direct message to your uh to your partner about what your needs are in the bedroom. So try texting it to them. Um, also, when you're communicating with your partner, it's okay to communicate with your partner doing sex. Um, using words like slow down. So if your partner is moving too fast, like they're in a, a marathon race um, j just to end it, no, slow it down. Um, that's too fast for me. Uh, give me more of, of give me more of that. If you like something in particular, you want a little bit more of it, don't be afraid to ask it. If you like it uh, a little harder, please address that fact. Uh, address the fact that if your partner does something uh, that you do not like, please state it because you don't want to feel uncomfortable doing sex and keep it again. Sex is supposed to feel good for you and your partner, just not your partner. Um, don't go there. Some places you might not want your um, partner to like. So in terms of masturbation, you can use uh, how many fingers you like. Uh, please use less fingers. If you're the type of person like your partner talk dirty to you, uh, address that issue. Tell your partner, hey, baby, could you talk dirty to me, talk sexy to me? Um, kiss me here. Tell your partner to do these things. If you're the type of person that does not like your uh, partner's tongue in your ear, please don't do that. That's nasty. Uh, if you're the type of person um, who's not you like kissing but you don't like tongue please do not shove your tongue in my mouth be uh explicit about what your needs is and what you want don't just accept anything if you also to um have any fears or if you have any previous traumas this is very important to be open and honest to your partner because your partner is not a mind reader because if your partner goes uh, to a particular uh zone that sets you off you need to tell your partner because they don't know why you're crying they're not mind readers they're gonna think that uh some of them on the notion will think you're just having uh you're crying because it feels good but you're not actually crying because it feels good you're crying because it's traumatizing you so please speak up about any trauma that you have or any fears that you had um let's talk about what should we do if my partner ejaculates too early so many times in the bedroom uh you heard did you come uh, i did yeah it can be frustrated so uh, what do you do in this type of this? Try to figure out uh, the issue first. Uh, try to figure out the issue first. So if you're in a re uh, relationship, first check for biological issues to make sure uh, there's nothing wrong. So that means 
going to the doctor, making these doctors appointments. So if you're uh, just hooking up with somebody and still ask uh, if there are any medical problems that cause you to pre uh, cause this premature ejaculation, because some people can take some type of medicine that will cause them to uh, have premature ejaculation. So you might want to be aware of that. Um, so you won't feel like your whole night is ruined. And then to try to shift away from the orgasm, but focus more on the pleasure. So many people focusing on getting off, but not focus on how the sex is making them feel. So if you just focus on getting off, you still haven't fulfilled your needs because it, you missed the pleasure part. Um, try to be more understanding about help taking the pressure off your partners to be the greatest uh, performer. Some people do have anxiety performing issues. So if, when it comes down to the bedroom, um, a lot of guys are expected to be the best. They have to be the best, but that's not always the issue. Uh, that should not always be the issue of them being the best. It should be them making you feel good. If these things don't pan out for you, try going on a retreat for couples. Or they have a couples retreats where you can go learn more about each other and things like that. What causes premature ejaculation? As I stated earlier, stress is one of them. So if you're coming home from work and you're in the mood and your partner is stressed out, so that can uh, cause a premature ejaculation. Depression causes premature ejaculations. Once again, performance anxiety. So if I'm expected to be the top notch, the greatest, um, by the time I get to the bedroom, I'm going to be so hyped up and my performance is not going to be good. Sometimes feeling guilty about things causes premature ejac uh, ejaculations, uh, problems in the relationship, uh, making it uncomfortable for your partner to perform. Once again, medications that uh, that you're taking, um, medications like Tramadol uh, causes premature ejaculation. So you have to be aware of the medications if your partner is taking medications. Be aware of these things. Be aware if they're stressed out, depressed, because these could cause premature ejaculation. Tips to keep from premature, uh, premature ejaculation. Uh, Strengthening your muscles. Uh, do weak pelvis contribute to premature ejaculation? Um, doing the Kellogg exercises three times a day, reps of 10 for 30 seconds each. Then you have the stop and start. Stop the arousal for 30 seconds, then start the stimulation process, uh, process back up again. The squeeze. This work as the same as the stop and start, but or you or your partner will squeeze the head of the penis, and but and you will repeat this process until you are uh, ready for your partner to ejaculate. Wearing a condom, uh, it desensitizes you enough so you can last a little longer. And accept the cream or spray. You put this on the head of your penis to make it less sensitive, leaving it off for about 30 minutes. It must be washed off before sex so you do not lose your erection or causes a loss of sensation for your partner. That, no, please. If you're going to use this bath, please wash it off because you do not want your uh, partner to feel numb down there. Masturbate. Masturbate. Uh, Masturbation and helps uh, some controls the flow of uh, sex. So if you masturbate a few hours uh, prior to sex, this will help you to be able to control the flow during um, sex. Okay. Can't have an orgasm, right? For many people, for many women, um, guys complain about that we take too long for having an orgasm. So we also too have to work on ourselves to understand, okay, it's been an hour later, I still haven't had an orgasm, what is the problem? So try to reorganize, try to pinpoint the factors of your life that causes you not to have an orgasm. So it could be some things that's going on in your life, it could be some things that's going on surrounding you. So try to reorganize to figure out what's going on. Use lubricant. Lubricant enhances the sensational touch, often enhances the orgasm. Um, limit the alcohol. Um, everybody say booze uh, makes sex feel better. Yes, it might does because it get people to open up themselves a little bit more. But subsequent drinking depresses the nerves and inhibit or orgasms. So please try to limit the alcohol. Um, you want to be able to, for one, be conscious enough to give consent to have an orgasm. Changing the time of lovemaking, you might want to try an earlier time with the age as the day progresses, erotic energy uh, enables. Meaning that um, as the older you get, your body don't have that much more energy. So some people have a lot more energy in the morning. So try prefer moving um, sex time to the morning. 
Next uh, point is spending time in a solo act. Uh, ladies, please, self-pleasure. Teach yourself what you want on, um, teach yourself on what you want. So self-pleasure, uh, take the time out to do that. Uh, try different intercourse. You can also too try diff well, different intercourse positions when you're having sex with your partner. If this position is not working out, uh, so say like you've been a missionary too long, try another uh, position. Modify intercourse, uh, meaning, hold on, stop, let's switch it up a bit. You see what I'm saying? So let's switch things up uh, in the course of a doing so, because if you're doing one thing so much long, for too long, no, you're not going to have an uh, orgasm. Encourage your lover to focus on the pleasure. So this meaning uh, your partner should encourage you more so to focus on how you feeling versus you getting off. Because if you worried about just getting off, it's not going to feel good. And another thing you could do too, um, if you're having problems, uh, having orgasm too, please uh, try introducing a uh, toy. Introducing toys to the relationship when it's the right time, right? Um, you want to avoid having a conversation with your partner the day of. Discuss this in advance. You cannot tell your partner today I want to use a toy. No, your partner might not be into it right now. So always have these conversations, um, not the day of, but probably about give it, I'm going to say two weeks or even a month or so because you want to plan this and you have to do a lot of planning around introducing something um, new. Always reassure your party he or she will have just as much pleasure as you. So it's not just for them too, it's also for your partner too. Uh, you should never use a toy on your partner without the permission. Um, you still have to get permission from your partner. Once you're your partner, um, once you have your partner's attention and agreement, let's shop for the toys. This can be done as a couple because you do not want your partner to feel left out. Uh, you don't want to go buy something and it's not beneficial for, for your partner as well. Um, this would also, while shopping for the toy, this will help engage your partner uh, and not allow your partner to feel left out. So while your partner is shopping with the toy for you, they get excited about using if your partner is still hesitant, allow your partner to control your pleasure with uh, remote toys. So for most people, this is fun because um, if you have not gotten to the point where your partner is okay with uh, having a toy, if they see how much it pleasures you by them controlling um, your pleasure, this can stimulate them more to want to use them. Toys should never be replaced for human contact, but rather as a way to learn more about their, uh, run about your bodies and what feels good. So it's not a substitute for you to just dismiss your partner, but rather introducing another phase into intimacy. Me and my partner with our toys. Um, what does a toy do? Find each other in rockless zones. So a toy will allow you to, to uh, find each other in rockless zone. You learn um, how to help each other reach your orgasm. Toys can help you enjoy a quicker and more intense orgasm. Uh, it helps stimulate your partner. Uh, then you also too, when some people on the menstrual, uh, if you prefer not to have sex or you do not just want to give oral to your partner, your partner can use such things as a male masturbator um, for, his ple uh, for his pleasure. Uh, your toy is just another way to stimulate uh, pleasure. You also can use vibrating bees, uh, allow your partner to feel the same type of vibrating sensation inside. Uh, while they're inside of you so uh while once again while your partner's inside of you and they have you have the bees on the inside of them they can feel the same type of pleasure you're feeling anal toys uh helps makes the g-spot and the p-spot um it helps you doing intercourse you hidden uh you hidden the spot during your intercourse um a clitor vibrator is designed to stimulate the clitoris so you have different forms of toys uh to perform different things. Um, another thing is when you want to try something new, once again, you have to always talk to your partner. So if you're the type of person, uh, you say, I'm tired of doing the same stuff, I want something new, so I want to try anal. First, introduce the topic to your partner. Do not introduce the topic uh, of anal sex the day before or the night before. Um, if you try to do some things like having anal sex after a good vegan um, lunch, 
it's not going to go right. So you have to be able to introduce this stuff the right way. Um, you have to give your partner time to consider if you have an anal sex. If they say, no, I don't want to do it, don't pressure. Give it a little bit of time, then come back. You always be respectful because you still need time, uh, still need consent. Uh, whether you're male, whether you're female, you still need consent to do anal sex. Um, if your partner agrees, do some research on keep, keeping yourself safe. Um, there's websites out there uh, that can teach you about uh, how to do uh, anal sex properly. You learn about the different uh, different positions and their benefits and proper ways of doing it. So you just want to be able to research it uh, the different ways. Always make sure that you and your partner are comfortable. Um, if it's uncomfortable, slow down, stop it. Don't, don't proceed if something is uncomfortable to you. Um, keeping it safe. Addressing uh, topics of te uh, testing with your partner. When was the last time you got tested? You want to always address those topics. Um, you always want to address those topics. Use a safe sex kit such as uh, condoms, lubrications, and prep. You're using condoms um, to prevent from SCIs, uh, any, uh, SCIs and unwanted practices. You're using condoms for once. Um, for preventing for HIV, um, you're losing lubricant um, to prevent any um, unnecessary tearing. Um, if you're gonna do, do anal sex and PrEP, PrEP is a big thing that can prevent you from getting HIV, but it cannot prevent you from getting STI. So still uh, have a backup plan such as a condom. Do we have a safe word? For some people who like being dominant and submissive, you have to have a safe word uh, for when things are getting a little bit rough because you don't want to get in trouble. Um, for hurting your partner while having sex. If you are the type that likes to use fruit or whipped cream, please make sure not to put it on the vaginal area. As you put these things in the vaginal area, this will irritate the vagina. Um, double bagging. Uh, you wanna know what double bagging is? People using two condoms. Please do not use two condoms. Um, it, no, just don't do that. Do not do this because of the same fact is the two condoms, um, the lubrication uh, rubs them together, will cause the condom to break or slip into the vag uh, vaginal air, which can make can cause STD and pregnancy. So the person said, well, I want two condoms. It somehow it slipped somewhere. So be mindful, double bag and using two condoms uh, is not good. Urinate before and after sex can help prevent uh, UTIs. Sex can irritate the bladder. Additionally, the filling, uh, additionally, the filling of a full bladder may reduce the uh, sensation of an orgasm. So once again, if you are prone to UTIs, please do this method. Uh, urine before sex, urine after. Even if you're not prone to UTIs, you don't want to get them. So please urinate um, before your sex, uh, before sex and after. And here go my source sheet, um, the things where I got all these things from, these nice things. So if you, like I said, if you're in a need of wanting to know how to do these things, uh, research thing as the Cosmopolitan, uh, kinky.com, um, bustle. These are some good things to teach you how to prepare yourself for talking to your uh partner addressing the issues of how you want to talk to your partner about bringing up toys so once again thank you for watching uh thank you for listening to my video <laughs>